Talk She. Recorded live. Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Mayan Cross Community uh, telewebcast. My name is Barbara Sadler, and I'm the author of the MayanCross.com website. And it's Tuesday, March 19th, on the Gregorian calendar. And for those of us who are learning or, and or following the Mayan sacred calendar, today is one seed or one canil for us. And for the Maya, today's energy, the seed energy, is an excellent day for planting a seed, whether it be literally or figuratively. So it feels like this is a perfect day to launch the Mayan Cross Community Call Series. And so for the next several months, we'll be meeting like this every 13 days uh, using the same access code, using the same technology. And on, uh, this is on the first day of a 13-day cycle, which is other than the 24-hour day cycle, this is the next smallest cycle um, of all of the Mayan calendric cycles. Um, as an FYI, for those of you who are new to our virtual venue, we've been meeting in this fashion since mid-November. And we'll continue out throughout the next uh, 20 13-day cycles uh, in 2013. And our, our method has been that we begin each call by lighting our candles that are situated close to where, we're, where we are. And we invoke the energy of the day and we create a sacred fire circle among us. And then once that sacred space has been established, uh, we'll spend time on a variety of topics having to do with the Mayan calendar, the Mayan uh, cosmology, the Mayan cross, and encourage all of you to share your experiences and insights for the sake of deepening our understanding of Mayan wisdom so that it may be best applied in our modern world. And many of you are on the call uh, listening only, and you've got chat capability over the Internet. Uh, some of the rest of you have dialed in to the uh, 724 area code, uh, 724 area code number. So we'll be giving an opportunity for you to share, and um, we're recording the call so that others around the world can download and listen, and kind of virtually participate uh, based on their own time frame. So in this space that we're creating here. Um, this is a circle not of right and wrong answers, and there is also no such thing as a dumb question. All of us recognize that each of us travels our own path at our own pace towards our own destiny. And here we'll be working with the Mayan day signs that are known as Nuales and the numerals and the Mayan cross. And we'll use a variety of means with guest speakers and sharing and discussions. Um, and true to the ancient traditions, we invite all with respect and honor and dignity, traditions and peoples, their point of view, their suggestions, and their wisdom. Uh, this will not be a place for selling products or services, but I may. Um, uh, and ask that you uh, take a look at a particular project or cause uh, that served the, the Maya. And if you're so moved, you may uh, you may want to donate to that in whatever way you're 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 called. Um, also, I'd like to indicate that um, I'll be using uh, English language as much as I can for the. Uh, for conveying the, what I understand is, is the Mayan wisdom. Um, and my, my default uh, in terms of Mayan language is K'iche. Uh, but I do recognize that a number of you have come to this body of wisdom 
using the uh, Yucatec translation for some of the words. So I, I understand all three, and I'll do my best to make sure that um, each of those is, is well communicated. And whenever you have any questions, there is a, a robust glossary on the MayanCross.com website. Um, and if you're in doubt of the meaning or definitions of any of these terms, um, I'm sure that uh, some of the answers can be found through that glossary as well. It's pretty well spelled out there. And let's just take a moment with that brief introduction. Uh, let's just take a moment and center ourselves uh, before we invoke the energies of the day. And by centering, I mean that kind of um, in mind and body and spirit, uh, sitting or standing or resting uh, in a in a safe space, a quiet space, with an erect spine and the feet or the sit bones grounded into the earth. And let's just feel the breath, a natural, organic breath, enter in through both nostrils softly and release through both nostrils. And just feel how bringing your awareness to your breath automatically, instantaneously seems to soften the mental activity. Connects you to your physical being and helps you feel supported by our earth being held, it's holding us, beneath us. And in the Mayan way, we'll ask the heart of the heavens, the heart of the earth, the heart of the wind, the heart of the water, and the heart of the fire to be with us this day. Filling out, expanding, and connecting us all heart to heart, soul to soul. And engaging this by lighting your candle, which illumines this energy that connects all of us. With that element of fire, which is the only element that cannot be contaminated, that has the most powerful transformative quality. And from this space, we'll thank a how. Thank a how for the seed energy that is with us today. It is the energy that is going to influence all that is not only for the next 24 hours but also because this is the first day of that 13 day cycle that 13 day cycle is known as a tracina so the seed energy is going to be influencing us also for the next 13 days it's kind of like the hue that's going to be influencing everything that 
unfolds, everything that manifests over these next 13 days. The Kiche word for seed is kanil. Uh, the Yucatec call it lamat. And it comes from the energy of the south. That is the directional influence on this energy. So the color is yellow or gold. And it is the energy also of maternity, birth. It is the connection between us. It is our connection to nature. It is the energy of all creation, the very beginning of all creation. I always connect to this energy. It's so powerful. It feels to me like the Big Bang energy, the very beginning when light was created, universes were created, the stars were created, and the stars and the seeds are together. They're one and the same to the Maya. And each one of us is a star seed. We have that light within us. We have that energy that radiates from our eyes as we look at one another. We radiate that same warmth and brilliance throughout our entire bio field. And it proliferates. That's why a lot of the Maya may refer to this as the rabbit energy. For its endless possibilities, its diversity, its uniqueness. And all of that is inherent in one little seed that you can hold, that you can coddle in one, in the little palm of your hand. And when you look at the glyph itself, the glyph is divided into four quadrants with lines. And then in the center of each one of those quadrants is a little hole, a little circle. And this is how the Maya plant their gardens their milpas that feed the whole family. They'll make a little mound that is kind of circular and then draw those lines into uh, four quadrants and then either with their finger or a little stick, put a hole in each one of the center of each one of the quadrants and drop one seed. And then you know, cover the seed and water it and watch it grow. So that is the interpretation. That is the the symbolism that you find in the glyph itself. So this is the way the Maya plant. And as each seed goes into one of those holes, it is blessed as it goes into the earth. And there was always the hope there is always the intention that this seed will come to fruition. This is the day, a Kaneel day for the Maya is a good day to ask for a good harvest. It is also a good day to prepare, to clean, to arrange and organize the altar in the home. So you see how rich and full is this energy of the seed. And it's coupled today with the energy of the number one, which in um, many of the Mayan languages is pronounced hun. Hun kanil. And the energy of one is that wholeness, 
that launches the new beginning. It's got this energy of thrust and spurt and growth all embodied within it. So there's sense there's a sense of awe, but there's also this sense of hope and intention for the greatest possible outcome for abundance. The the abundance that is inherent in creation. So we thank you, Mother, Father, God, for this energy that can guide us today. And for the sacred nature that every day has as unique, as beautiful as something in a practical way we can work with. And oh yes, the Maya are very, very practical. And their practicality is embedded with their spirituality in a, in just a, you know, a lovely tapestry. And that's why a lot of us have found uh, the importance and the significance of working with these energies day by day to help our lives stay enriched and magical and mystical and guided. And of course, some of us on our planet were born on a Canille day. Uh, The chances of that happening are one in 20 because there are 20. Uh, possible signs. The chances of that happening on a one Canille day are uh, 1 in 260. We can see the odds are uh, pretty stupendous. And I've taken the liberty to invite a person who I've come to know through the work with the Mayan Cross um, who was born on a four Canille day. And she is going to be talking to us about her experiences um, with the Mayan cross and with Kanil and the other energies that are embedded in uh, in her cross. And we met a couple of months ago. Uh, and as soon as we met, I was immediately struck by um, her wit and her work and her amazing and uh, humorous ability to communicate the deepest discoveries she's made through her spir- on her spiritual path. Her name is Worth Cooley Prost, and from a background perspective, she's worked in mental health, and then for many years in drug and medical research. She's from the East Coast near Washington, D.C. Um, her path led her into civil rights and peace activism in the 60s and then involvement with women's issues and a metaphysical study group in North Carolina. North Carolina. Next came 10 years of justice and democracy work with the people of Haiti and then a decade of immersion in indigenous studies. Her first introduction to the work of the Maya came in 1999 in the year 2000 when she went to a fire ceremony held by Don Alejandro of the uh, Shift of the Ages fame, uh, who was in the D.C. area at the time. And Flor de Mayo was his firekeeper back then. And this led to a connection that brought her to Native Amer- brought a worth to Native American gatherings and later work as an East Coast elder with the Turtle Women Rising. She's a learner, a teacher, a writer, and an artist. And today, her kiln-fired glass is made in a sacred way, often using glass that's been soaked in the energies 
of celestial and ancient wisdom's auspicious events. And I, I am in possession of some of that glass that is on my altar, and it has certainly infused my altar with, uh, with a special sort of quality. Uh, she started the day with the my in sacred calendar for about 12 years now. And she found the Mayan cross uh, shortly after it went online uh, almost two years ago. And in her words, she says, as a four Taneo person, she knows the value of, quote, looking closely. So I'd like to ask Worth to unmute herself and talk to us a bit about what it's like to be Kaneel and what aspects of the Kaneel energy have resonated most for you. So, Worth, are you on? I am on. Over right. Uh, technology is working for us today. So, can you give us a little background? Can you give us a sense of uh, how this awareness of your day sign, Taneel, for Taneel, has uh, resonated for you? Yeah. Um, welcome, welcome. Thank, and thank you for the introduction, and thank mm. you very much for the work you do. Mm. And Joseph, it's an you, honor. Thank you very much for acknowledging that. Joseph, you as well, because I am familiar with common passion. Um, Thank you, Worth. I had each layer of getting to <clears throat> getting further information about Keneal has added. You know, originally it was through the the Mayan magics where it was Lamont. And then several years later, when I got the flip chart of um, the Sulkin, um, it's also Lamont there, but it has um, a little further information. And then with the cross, um, it really expanded and integrated a lot of things. And I, I look at it and think, okay, that explains um, abundance. and sort of the integration of experience. And when I look back over my life, um, whether it's yesterday or when I was a little kid, um, abundance really is the right word. Um, I had three mothers simultaneously growing up, my mother, my grandmother, and Alberta, who went to work for my grandmother when she was 16. Hmm. Um and I had, and until the last couple of years, I'd always thought of that. When I said anything about it, I'd say, well, Spirit must have known, okay, this kid's going to be a tough one. She's going to need more than one mother. Give her three. <laughs> uh, and, and now I can look at it and see, no, it's just part of all of that. Mm-hmm. And the the integration, um, one one of the things that, working with the cross really has done is made sense of how integrated one um, phase of life has been with the next. If I if I sat and looked at a piece of paper from somebody I didn't know and saw, okay, they did this then and then they did this and then they did this, um, it, it would be sort of the same kind of thing as if some years ago, I, when I looked at the publication pages of my um, resume, I thought, well, this is really neat. But a person reading this would think, okay, fine, but what does she do? Um, because it's all over the place. But each one of these things has led logically into the next. Not not mm-hmm. logically in terms it's woven into the next. And somehow, I don't think I'm expressing it very well, but that that felt really consolidated learning more about the Keneal energy per se. Do you think the number, having the number four, carrying the number four 
contributed to that? Um, I'm really grateful for the number four because from Western astrology, I have no earth signs anywhere. And when I read something that says stability, I think, yes, good, thank you. Um, I do, and, and there's there's sort of a, a wholeness to it, too. Um, and somehow the... Um, it's also related to the Keneal energy that everywhere I've worked that I can think of over time, um, and since I'm 68, that's a lot of places. By the time I left, people laughed more and cussed better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the the rabbit side of this exactly. Keneal energy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> And it's funny, earlier this morning I was looking at um, the information on Keneal from the Cross, the page about this particular kind of energy. Um, And saw the thing about um, Keneal days, about... um, a good day for asking to regain or resume something that was belief lost. And I was looking everywhere for copal. There there are two small bags of copal and, and one kind of large one. I think it's half a pound. Um, on this floor of this house, and I couldn't find any of them, but I did find an earring of my great-grandmother's that had been at large for the better part of a year. And somehow that also relates to Keneal energy. I, I had told you a couple of days ago, Barbara, that when I go to a workshop or something, I have what I need, whether it's a going to a, a, a bring your papers kind of stuff or um, a, a workshop where, or a, a gathering where you have all sorts of things. And I have everything organized, and it's very neat, and I set it out. And within an hour, there's just this sort of expanding pool of stuff around me. Um, mm-hmm. And it's it's nice to have the the explanation of that through... Mayan cross and mm-hmm. our our house is like that um, I've been diligently working on the letting go of that which no longer serves you and getting things organized and it's simply in many ways it's not possible because everything is so layered or it's 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 not a process that one can get one's brain around um, mm-hmm. because Things are so layered and connected. Um, I, a couple of weeks ago, it, it was an honest question. I I asked my husband and daughter, "Where do the muskrat skulls go?" There's no answer to that. I don't know. There are too many categories. But what's happening is, over time, each one of these things that has been kept. Um, because I've come across it and thought, ah, okay. It's also a hazard to doing mixed-media artwork is there's very little in the physical universe that if you look at it and think, could I use that? The answer is no. So you collect it. But gradually, uh, particularly in this getting, moving things out, um, the places for particular things, the people they were for, are sort of showing up. Um, mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned um, when we were talking a few days ago that um, I think someone said this to you, that you have this energy of creative chaos and yeah. <laughs> that you have this energy that even the best laid plans, best laid projects, can't factor this in. Yeah. Can you expand on that a little bit? Um, it's like this, you're always on the edge of breaking through into the unknown kind of uh, well, scenario? Well, historically, I had looked at that as a function of having, again, in Western astrology, a Scorpio ascendant. Um, and my... Um, I, I worked in biomedical research and regulatory research, but I also did a lot of independent research, particularly when I became involved in Haiti, 
because as soon as I started learning about Haiti, I was learning about Washington and far, far more than I would ever have wished to know. Mm -hmm. Um, And during a period of time looking at our, what I came to call strategic medicine systems, meaning medical projects and programs that appear to have health agendas that have agendas behind that, um, things just fell in my lap, Um, pieces Mm -hmm. of information, connections. Now, Mm -hmm. what part of that is the energy and what part of it, I, I only started doing my own ancestor work about five years ago after urging people Um, for a good five years before that to do ancestor work because of the importance that indigenous cultures place on that. Um, And now I can see also, well, some of that stuff just didn't fall in your lap. Your ancestors put it there. Mm. It It needed to be, it needed to be uncovered. It needed to be brought into, into awareness and in in contemporary awareness, and they made sure you had it. And, you know, one of the things that um, initially uh, Worth and I were talking about was uh, using the Mayan cross for a lot of other people that you know really well and looking at their crosses. And she got wind of this this theory that I've kind of been cultivating about soul groups and how do you look at the inner circle of people in your life and how do their crosses match or relate or resonate with your own and and worth was was kind of coming up, up on the same kind of ideas that that I was having about it worth do you want to share a little bit of that yeah um, that's that's been just really fascinating um, first, and I, I have to say, when you when you do this, um, you except for like you know daughter, husband, somebody immediately. If you're looking at someone else's cross, I I feel um, it feels intrusive not to say, hey, I would like to look at your cross. Although occasionally I do that, and occasionally I'll ask somebody's birthday. Or if I see it, I just can't resist the temptation to, what is that on the cross? Um, and when when you compare crosses, you really need to look at them side by side because you, you can't, I can't hold um, the, the configurations. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I, I think the first ones I was looking at was my daughter's relative to my husband in terms of what um, what common day signs they might have and in what positions. And it really, really supported um, thinking that I had done in the past about his role. Um, he came into her life when she was 11, and that gave her... She'd, I'd been a single parent since she was six and a half, and those were some fancy, stormy years. Um, and that gave her the space to fall apart that she hadn't had when it was just the two of us. Mm-hmm. And because of that, the relationship that was established between them was had a very, very firm foundation. And when I look at their two crosses and where their day storms they share are rainstorm and reed and where they fall in their crosses, it just really confirms that. Now, Mm -hmm. another thing, with my own cross, there are two people I've encountered. um, And there there is like about a 6% chance that you will have um, overall the, the same... Um, you'll have um, sun, you'll have jaguar, you'll have seed, you'll have wind, you'll have wisdom for each one of those. Now, having them in the same configuration, I've I've asked a retired math professor friend who said, I don't know how to do that. 
So that has to be much smaller than about 6%. Mm -hmm. Um, The only case I've encountered where there were identical, um, not only distribution of um, day signs, but of numbers also, is in my husband's. And my brother, Uncle Charles, mm-hmm. who died last fall. Mm-hmm. Um, who yeah, was, they were they were identical except for their year bearer. Yep, absolutely mm-hmm. identical. Mm-hmm. And um, Charles had he hadn't seen. We had like a thirty year break in our relationship, and um, he hadn't seen my daughter since she was oh six, I think. Um, and yeah, the night that he died, he, um, clearly went to her room and knocked her drum and the beater off her altar at three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he had died yet until a couple of days later, but she had posted that, that when, when your drum and the beater fly off your altar at 3 a.m., you get up and drum Mm. And the last thing I had said to him last year was um, that I expected a visit when he decided he'd had enough here and that if I wasn't paying attention to the TV on, was on or something, knocked something off the dresser. So when I learned two days later that Charles had in fact died then, um, that one of the things I will say, too, about the the one person who was very close to me years ago and then, um, again, for about four months last year um, with an identical distribution of signs, it's, I'm feeling like my, my experience has been it's important to see what... Um, to be aware of the distributions when when somebody is where their signs, how your charts compare, but not to let your brain assign outcome assumptions to that awareness. Because it's well, yeah, and a, a good case in point there is um, that people that are born as twins. Uh-huh. you know, minutes apart or even hours apart, they would still have the same day signs. They would have identical day signs. But they're still unique and unrepeatable in their essence. So that's and yet, how... And yet they are connected. Twins mm-hmm. are connected in such unusual ways. They have a... Um, but they're still unique expressions. Absolutely. Yeah, so you can't really... And I, um, I thought categorized too much the soul groups as being when I was first looking at that um, because my first response on encountering um, the friend with exactly the same distribution was oh wow same oversoul um, but it's it's deeper than that it's a, you use the the phrase resonance and since sound is the organizing energy of our world. Um, it it's more like being a member of the same chord, exactly. Mm. Um, but this is great at work because we have guest five just uh, entered into the chat and said, what might you say or conclude about a soul group person having the same day signs in the same places as one's own cross, even though they're, the numbers in your bears might be different? And that's kind of what your sense of the answer to that question is, that there is a cord, of a connection, a special kind of, at the soul level. So it's a very, very subtle connection. I mean, isn't that how you would answer that question? Yes, and it's a, you know, I had thought about um, Kurt Vonnegut's um, notion of a caress, a, a group of people that get born um, at the same time and connected in some way over and over and over. But the the, the resonance of there being a chord um, in, in 
sound terms, I think is deeper than that. Um, yeah, well, it, it goes into the whole idea of what is soul and uh, the sacred contract that we make when we come into um, an earth uh, we come onto the earth plane when we're born, and how uh, even though you're connected, even though there is this this cord among certain people uh, in you, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going. That's your uh, what they also call the twin flame, which means that is your everlasting love, where you know, um, all bliss is found. It means that you have contracted at a certain level to learn something, experience something, um, to come to a higher expression of yourself, come to a higher expression of your soul um, through that person. So even a soul mate um, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be together forever and ever um, and, as partners or as man and wife or, or, or however you want to label that, but that you are here to uh, together to realize some aspect of existence um, that resonates that you wouldn't yeah that you wouldn't. Yeah that you, you may not find otherwise. So and hopefully that, that makes some sense. The, Let's move on, though. Oh, go ahead, Ruth. The, uh, one the more comment on this. I was thinking about um, the, the, the core energy of abundance. Um, just like if you're facing south, north is at your back, so you can't ever really be just um, resonating with one direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and was just thinking recently that the um, other side of abundance is scarcity, mm-hmm. which is a, a whole nother layer of, of what I'm untangling right now or, or pers- exploring right now in how those two things work together, have worked together in my own life. Um, and and the fact that we in Western culture, unlike indigenous cultures anywhere in the world, um, we we see abundance and growth and all that is good and scarcity is bad. But that's not how life works. It works as a flow. Um, we have scarcity of warmth and sunlight during the winter, and yet only winter holds the heart of spring. Mm-hmm. Mhm. Nice. I like that. Well put. So I've I've got another uh, question for you, um, and I'll ask this before we open up the lines to get other people's perspectives. But um, have you used the Mayan mantra? And if so, how has the Mayan mantra affected your oh, your daily life, just I, daily life, from a I practical perspective. Really urge people to, um, and thank you for putting it up phonetically um, on your, your website. Mm-hmm. Really encourage people to do that. And what's interesting is, is to me, well, since hearing Don Alejandro speak, um, I had, I've done my own version of Lord's Prayer in the morning in the shower um, influenced by um, the years in the metaphysical study group in the 70s and um, for instance you don't say lead us not into temptation, you say lead us through temptation and deliver us Um, but I started after hearing Don Alejandro and and being there for the fire ceremony, although I didn't know enough yet. I left after the first part. So fortunately, I went and heard him speak too. But I began that by saying, a how. Thank you, Mm. Father, Mother, God. 
um, Papa Nunan Siela, which is in Creole and just feels so personal, Heart of Heaven, Heart of Earth, and then went on. And to find out all these years later, um, invoking a how at the beginning of that, wow, thank you. <laughs> it, it's, But the mantra, um, it has real power. Um, you, I, you can feel it in your body. Um, as, as you put it during the, the YM thing, your physiology responds. And I tend to um, typically, it, it arises silently, um, just on its own. And sometimes it's spoken aloud and sometimes you get very eloquent with it. Um, but it has real power and I really encourage people to um, call that in because it's there and it's real. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact um, that we're using my language here, which they would say is original language, is a primordial sound. So these, they're not dialects, but they're languages, um, were or um, divined languages. They weren't constructed from the intellect, but they were perceived um, in nature right? When from, things, from the forces of the universe. And when it sound, um, your, your brain doesn't hold it. And I like having a good brain. It's like having a good car, um, mm-hmm. but it's just transportation. And there are so many times, particularly, again, for... European-based Western culture where we have inverted um, what we can quote-unquote know with our brain and made that primary over everything that can't be known and can't be seen and can't be touched, which is so much larger. Um, So when you are dealing with sound, um, whether it's spoken or music, your, your brain is with you, but it's sitting down and not in the way. Right. It, it's an opening. And it, it helps you feel, you know, viscerally, uh, these energies. Um, turning off the whole monkey mind aspect of Yeah, the first ceremony I, I was involved in was, well, I went to the fire ceremony, but I didn't stay because I didn't know enough. But I had a weekend workshop with Martin Brechtel, um, mm-hmm. And years ago, and in between um, the ceremonial parts, we built the world. By the way, that weekend, um, he would explain things in English, but all the ceremony was conducted in Mayan, and nobody there besides him spoke Mayan or understood Mayan. But that weekend was um, as pivotal a time in my life as. Um, the, when when my daughter was born, or uh, December sixteenth, nineteen ninety, in Haiti, uh, it was a um, it was a huge portal. Um, I wasn't afraid of spiders anymore for the first time in my life when I got home. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. what that told me, my brain's interpretation of that was things behind the intellect had shifted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the sound is very, very real. And the last exercise in that workshop, we had been partnered with our um, indigenous soul um, during the um, weekend. And we were standing opposite each other in these two long lines, singing, not a song, just words. And I wasn't listening to anybody else, but I know as soon as... Um, my partner began to sing, and as soon as I was singing, both of us had tears streaming down our faces, and I have no doubt with my brain that we were singing in original language. Mm -hmm. That it reaches that part of you that um, isn't limited to the you that's on Earthwalk. It reaches the thread that your soul and your ancestors 
those of which you who are working with you have carried always. Which is that. Wow. Well, thank you, Worth. Um, I'd like to take a few minutes here and to see if any other guests on the call would like to add to or ask questions about any yes. of the, any <laughs> things. I would. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who do we have here? It's Andrea Hansen calling from Toronto. Good morning, everybody. Um, I was a bit late on the call, so forgive me if I'm a little bit out of it. Um, but I've lit my candle, and uh, I'm here. And actually, mm-hmm. I was just looking on the website to try to find the, the mantra. Is that the one that is um, connected specifically to one's personal cross, or is there another one? No, it's it's your mantra, and it's it's the... Uh, it's five sounds, five words that are the Mayan words for your Mayan cross. Okay, okay. Then they're, I... they're in a particular order. The order is the head, the heart, the right arm, the left arm, and the feet. And uh, that's how they're listed on the uh, on the results page when you do your Mayan cross, when you calculate your Mayan cross. Yes. That's automatically um, displayed for you in the proper order with the proper words. Okay, because I remember doing that. I remember seeing it, so I'll go back and find it. And um, just a, a note: um, I was just I'm just on the website, and I'm looking on the bit that says "Become a Daykeeper," and I clicked on the daily guide, and uh, it's coming up in what appears to be um, maybe Chinese or another Asian language, <laughs> not in English. <laughs> So um, I don't. You're know. on MayanCross.com. Yep. That's funny. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just on my computer, um, but everything else is in English. But when I clicked on and, the and what what page are you on? Um, okay, it's the the Mayan Cross using your cross page. So it has the explanation. What is the Mayan Cross? Um, that's at the top of the page. And then when I scroll down to become a daykeeper, to the daily guide link. Um, I just clicked on the daily guide, and it's uh, so on the top. It says myencountofdays.com, and uh, it's you no know, the the pages that you're mentioning. I'm not even recognizing what pages you're talking about. Okay, well, from the from the results page. No, no, your... if you're on the Mayan Cross, the website, and you go so it says the the top of the page says about Mayan wisdom, interpreting your cross. The link that says using your cross, so it's the fourth one on the the tab. Okay, top. got it. And uh-huh. scroll down um, to where it says become a daykeeper. Which I don't have that page. I have uh, ancestral healing, personal power, and meditations. On the page that says using your cross. Well, from oh. the menu, from the drop down menu that says using your cross. Let me have a look here. That may be one of your ancestors. I've had ancestors show up on the computer. Oh, I, okay. So you clicked on the page that says using your cross. Right. And all and the, there, the page says at the top, so the page that I, that came up when I clicked on using your cross, it isn't, okay. it isn't a page that has ancestral healing, personal power, or meditations at the top. Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you now. Okay. Right. So it says using your cross, and then the top thing is what is the mind cross. Gotcha. I'm there. Okay. So then just scroll down a bit, and, uh-huh. and then it says become a daykeeper. It's just uh-huh. slightly below the photo of the person by the lake. Uh-huh. And then in yellow it says daily guide, which is underscored, and it's a link. So it says become a daykeeper. Use this or other websites or calendars. Uh-huh. Oh, that's pretty weird. Okay, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, unless you know Chinese or whatever this is, so that must, that that must be a mistake. So let me fix that. I don't know. Um, the daily guide should go to um, – there is a, a book that's published every year mm-hmm. it's called The Mayan Count of Days. And mm-hmm. maybe they changed their URL since I originally put this up. Mm-hmm. But um, what is your name again? It's Andrea Hansen. Andrea Hansen. Yeah. I be, I okay. be on Facebook. Can you do me a favor and just give me about, oh, maybe four hours sure. to correct this link? 
Yeah. I will correct it for you um, so that you'll go to the spot, the actual spot <laughs> that I intended. It happens, um, you know. <laughs> I, it, I know it does, and I appreciate um if somebody guest aid is saying, yeah, my commuter is Chinese or something too. But I'll fix that. I'll fix that in a matter of hours, um, maybe even minutes, depending on how things go at the end of the call. Okay. Thank so, you for correcting. Thank you for that. This is a, a work in progress, and it's always changing, and I'm I'm lucky to have the tools so that I can make the changes quickly enough to yeah. uh to make sure you folks are all on track with uh, with the content. But you do have such a beautiful website, and it is an amazing Thank resource. You. So much, because Thank I know you. how much A labor of love, a labor of love. <laughs> um, okay, well, we're going to have to uh, wrap up now, unless, Andrea, you had another comment or question? Um, no, that was that was my main my main. Oh. Question. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I need to wrap up now, and uh, I'd like to do so with just a couple of things. One of them is um, this this seed energy that we've been talking about for the last almost hour is prevalent today, and it's going to be influencing the next 13 days. And whenever we have a one day like this, it's a really good day to set an intention for the next 13 and use the seed energy. It may be just back in the, in, in the re- recesses of your psyche um, to help you manifest whatever that intention is. And, you know, we know the nature, we know the essence of the energy. So I'm inviting you to... Um, take some time today to kind of let that sift through and come up with an intention uh, that you'd like to manifest within the next 13 days. So this is baby steps. You know, we're not going to recreate the world, but we're going to work with the energies. Um, That's why they're there. That's how the Maya used us um, as a practical tool for improving uh, our life circumstances so that the whole planet's uh, circumstances can be improved as well. So I invite you to do that. Um, And then I I mentioned earlier that I may ask um, you to take a look at a Mayan project or cause um, and see if there's anything that resonates with you in any way that you would like to contribute. And one of those causes that um, I'm personally involved in is uh, it's a project that's gone up on um, the uh, Indiegogo website, which is a fundraising website that is integrous. I mean, I've, I, I've donated money through this means before, and it it's it's you know it's a well respected well regarded uh, uh, internet functionality, but this is a, a friend of mine who lives down in Guatemala. He's Maya, and his name is Ronnie and his wife and another gentleman by the name of Juan, and they run the uh, Mesoamerican Permaculture Institute. And they have uh, been doing this for years. And I attended one of their workshops. Uh, They traveled up to the Oneida Nation up in northern Wisconsin and taught uh, a lot of the the folks around that area the principles of permaculture as perceived through, uh, through the Mayan culture. And they have a project right now they're fundraising for, and it's, called the Seed Revolution in Guatemala. And they're, they're trying to raise money to create a seed bank for the Mayan people. And that's not just in Guatemala, but in Salvador and Belize and, and, and the other areas. So if you want to take a look at that potential, um, you know, they're giving little uh, perks, they call them, for donations of you know, anywhere from ten dollars up, um, and have a look at that. I've I've put the link out on the um, on the chat now, 
And I will also put it out on the Mayan Cross uh, Facebook page. So um, if you're interested, they're, they've got 16 days left of, this, um, of the fundraising effort, and they're halfway to their goal. Um, so have a look at that. And then lastly, um, uh, our next call will be on Monday, April 1st, which in the Gregorian system is April Fool's Day which is kind of cute because it's a one crocodile day on the Mayan sacred calendar. And we will be honoring a very well-known elder by the name of Tata Pedro Cruz, who is one imosh, one crocodile. He is the, uh, a well-known elder in, uh, actually, he's got a worldwide um, uh, following at this point in time. And uh, they're about ready to launch a film that is made about him called Watamaya. And it's a, it's a beautiful f- film documenting not only his life and uh, Guatemalan history, but also uh, many aspects of, of Mayan cosmology. And then, uh, I, I lied, I said one more thing, but two more things. Tomorrow is the vernal equinox. The energy tomorrow is to offering. And always on an offering day, it's auspicious for making offerings. And the fact that it's on the vernal equinox, uh, under the energy also of seed or canil, is a very tantalizingly significant, very auspicious. So um, you may be connecting with those in the sacred fires all around the world that are honoring the equinox uh, from all of the archaeoastronomic sites such as Chichen Itza where the serpent is going to be slithering down the stairway um, at sunrise and I believe also at sunset um, tomorrow and you can connect to all of that and help recreate and uh, amplify those energies um, for for all of a, the greater good as well as your own personal intentions. And then um, the other interesting aspect, if you've been following things on the Mayan Cross uh, Facebook page, is that the um, the dictator, uh, former di- dictator Rios Montt, that is up for trial. Uh, unprecedented trial in the country of Guatemala uh, starts today. And it's been postponed and the date's been moved around and it's back to being today. So for the benefit of the Maya also, if you can just hold a little thought form uh, for the highest possible outcome for the trial um, for the perpetrators of genocide within that country during their 30-year um, internal conflict that would be most appreciated as well. So that's a lot. We're a little over time, but thank you so much, everyone, for your participation. Uh, monitor, if you will, the Mayan Cross Facebook page for continued updates uh, and guidance and comments. Feel free to uh, to participate as many others have. So let's just take another moment to open our circle again, close our eyes, feel our breath, feel the fire in our bellies and the glow from our hearts, connecting, feeling the sanctity of this day And may may you carry its grace throughout the day. Yes, five says, thank you, everyone. Barbara, thank you. Blessings and abundance to you all. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Worth. Thank Thank you, you. Joseph. Thank you, Worth, for being here and helping us hold this beautiful space. And may that just proliferate like a rabbit throughout the day.
Thank you. <laughs> Hippity hop, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay. See you next time. We'll be back on uh, April Fool's Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Many thanks. Much love. <laughs>